Sarah Sargent and I am uh, with Audubon, Pennsylvania, and this is a program we run here partly for educational reasons, but also partly for uh, uh, to collect data uh, for scientific reasons on bird migration and stop over habitat, looking at the habitat quality here and uh, whether birds are gaining weight while they visit the scuttle during migration. The bird is trying to get over there, it flies in, and the idea is it kind of, um, what I have here, it, it, it flies in and then it falls down into this pocket. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of, uh, it's stuck down there, it flaps, it struggles a little bit. And so then we uh, come along and we carefully pick them out and um, we don't let them stay in too long uh, because they can get more entangled. We don't need them to be very entangled. Mm -hmm. These are from the um, bird banding lab in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And they issue all bird bands, and each one has an individual number, unique number. And these two come in different sizes, the smallest to largest. Um, we think get bigger than that. Of course, they get up to like goose size. We don't, we don't ban geese. I don't have any of those. Okay. <laughs> so these are the smallest ones, and these go on things like kinglets and some of the smaller warblers. Um, and then up to size two is what a robin would wear. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we have special pliers we use to put the bands on for the birds. Um, we write it down, we write down what kind of bird it's on, and then we use these special pliers to um, crank it on right around the leg, and, um, and then it stays there for the rest of the bird's life. Okay. And uh, they're very lightweight, they're aluminum, uh, they don't hurt the birds, and so uh, that me makes it though so that if somebody else catches that bird or when sometimes people find a dead bird has a band on it we know where it was banded here at Presque Isle we know some information about it when we band it and then we can also get the information about it uh, when it dies or is recaptured somewhere else and so we'll know it flew from here to wherever it shows up um, so we do take a couple other measurements of that the wing length is a standard measure of the size of the bird. Um, we weigh it, and it's a little scale. We weigh how fat the bird is. We look at the fat that's in the wishbone area of the bird, the fish perculum, and that's an uh, index of sort of migratory condition because the birds really fuel up during migration and they put on quite a bit of fat. It's visible. Um, and, um, then we also look at features about their feathers and their plumage that show what age and sex the bird is. And so we try to figure out if it's male or female. Some birds, of course, are different colors. <laughs> uh, others are not, and so we can't tell the sex. Mm -hmm. And so, but then at this time of year, it's springtime, so we can often look at the wear on the edges of the feathers or some other features about the feathers that tell us that it was a bird that was hatched last summer. And those are called second year birds. And a lot of times we can actually tell that if it's been one that hatched last year, a second year bird, versus one that's older than that. Once they get older than two, uh, we can't really tell how old they are. Okay. <laughs> Most of these small birds, you know, they can live five, six, seven, eight years. Um, uh, and that's actually one of the other advantages of banding is that once they're marked, if you recapture them five years later, you know it was five years since you banded it. And if you knew that it was a hatching year bird or a you know, second year bird at that point, then you know actually how old the bird is. So it's one of the other types of data that's, uh, we've learned a lot uh, from banding through, through the decades. Um, so that's pretty much it.